This broadcast, presented by Squirtle and its partner schools, is not to be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The content and descriptions on the platform may not be disseminated without the written consent of Squirtle and its partner schools. The thoughts and opinions shared on Squirtle's platform are those of the individual and do not necessarily reflect the views of the organization or its partners. Squirtle does not tolerate or condone hateful, bigoted, or divisive content. We want to thank our schools, advertisers, and individuals that have joined with us in our mission to build community around the local school.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Memorial Stadium for tonight's 5A District Soccer matchup between your Lady Indians and the Titans, Lady Titans of Carl Albert High School. Following this game, the guys will play, so we'll kill the stream, create a new stream key, so stay tuned in DelRenoIndians.tv. We'll bring all that to you as soon as we can. Starting lineups tonight for the Lady Indians. Kinley Golden, the senior netminder, double zero. Senior Alyssa Guzman. Senior Caroline Huber with number five on her jersey tonight. Senior Reese Hardy, number seven. The freshman, number eight, Connolly Knapp. Joey Lyerly, the junior, number 12. Taylor Decker, the seniors, 13. Carly Golden, the senior, 15. Bree Spann, the junior, 22. The junior, Peyton Bricky, wears 24. And rounding out the starting lineups, number 25, the senior, Leslie Valdez, as the great Kurt Parker has dubbed her. The Velociraptor. And if you're a Leslie Valdez fan out there, I've seen those Velociraptor t-shirts. I'm trying to get my hands on one of those. So if you're in the, if you're in the loop with the Leslie Valdez Velociraptor tees, reach out to us. Let us know. I want to wear one of those. El Reno comes into the contest. Seven wins and two losses. They're o and their only two losses have come against... The Lady Irish of Bishop McGinnis in a 5-0 loss, as well as 5A number one Piedmont, whom they lost to last week in penalty kicks. For 80, min or, uh, 80 minutes wasn't quite enough, so they added a few extra minutes. Still wasn't enough, we went to penalty kicks, and El Reno came out on the losing side of that coin flip. And as you're looking at your screen, El Reno in their blue jerseys will be defending the east, uh, the east goal, attacking the west goal, and will be in the first half attacking right to left to right across your screen. Carl Albert in their road uniforms, white with red numbers, will be defending the west goal, attacking the east goal, and playing from your right to your left as you're watching at home. And if you're a Titan fan tuning in, we welcome you. Thank you for joining us. We know you have a lot of options on things to do on a Tuesday afternoon and into the evening, and we appreciate you electing to spend time with us. So if you're a Titan fan, we welcome you. Conley quickly into Caroline Huber. El Reno's going to retreat into the defensive end to set the offense up. Caroline Huber sat better part of last week, but back in the lineup tonight as the top, as a uh, first five. Leslie Valdez attacking on the near side. Leslie with it on the right foot. Kicks it ahead. Caroline Huber in a foot race. She's going to win that foot race, but can she get to the line? She does. It's kicked off of... Carl Albert, so a corner kick to come on the far side corner. And last week at the home game, last Friday night, we saw Carly Golden attempt those corner kicks, and she's appears to be doing the same. And you'll remember last week you didn't see, uh, at least on the Friday night game, didn't see Caroline Huber participate in that one. They're arresting her, trying to get her healthy for the stretch run. In her absence, a non-factor. El Reno one-handedly 5-0 in that contest. And a corner played right at the net, but headed high and out of bounds. Goal kick awarded to the Lady Titans. Leslie Valdez, the nearest defender. Reese Hardy on the near side. Alyssa Guzman on the far side. Caroline Humer, Huber and Conley Knapp sitting in the middle. Speaking of Conley Knapp, she pokes that one free. Joey Lyerly with it on her right foot. Finds a slicing Reese Hardy, but she's not going to get there. Ball's going to go out of bounds. A goal kick awarded to the Lady Titans. Carl Albert, and the winds are gusting strong out of the kind of east-southeast, so El Reno's going to start with the wind roughly at their back, but at their back and from their left to right, and they'll play the second half into a headwind. And I was talking with 
Patty Purvis, Miss Patty as we call her in the athletic department today, and she jokingly said, I woke up, I looked over at Billy this morning and said, it's windy outside, it must be a home game for soccer tonight. So, Good read defensively to jump in front of that. Leslie has it, she's trying to get it clear. Two white jerseys around her, bounces off of her foot. Reese has it, check that Conley has it. Advances it far into the, it's going to cross the end line, so another goal kick awarded. El Reno striving to try and keep offensive pressure on, keep the ball out of their defensive end. Keep Carl Albert on the, on the fence, as it were. Cross, 50-50 ball. It's going to be cleared out to the 25-yard line. Step for step defense go the Lady Indians. Conley with it on the right foot. Checks it down. Reverse it across field and up. Reese to Joey. Joey with the quick one-timer, Reese sprinting down the sideline. Can she get there? She can't. Out of bounds, across the end line. So a corner, check that goal kick rather awarded. Alyssa Guzman on the far side sideline. A ball is poked loose and taken by Carl Albert. Carly Golden retreats, picks it up, advances it off the right foot. The one-timer off the foot to Joey. Joey finds Leslie in the middle. Leslie tries to cross. Stays with it, able to keep the ball contested. And we'll see what they award here. A corner awarded for the, or to the Lady Indians, rather. El Reno to substitute, checking in for the Indians. Number 14, Bree Vickers. And number 10, Christina Connor. Checking out Alyssa Guzman and Reese Hardy. We saw this rotation at the, the championship game, the Northwest Class and Tournament. kick awarded to Lady Titans. They're going to set it up on the L of the El Reno in the end zone of this new performance artificial turf here at Memorial Stadium. There's some good ball handling to get clear and a whistle called and they Penalty called, tripping. It's Caroline Huber got the foot hooked around her, and she took a tumble. No worse for the wear. She bounces back up, and we see Carly prepared to take this penalty kick. You see the official walk off the 10-yard separation. So Carly trying to kick it from the 27. If she can get it off before the wind catches it, and she can't again, it's rolling on her again. Carly flies that one over the top. It's off the hands of the Carl Albert netminder. She batted it down, didn't catch it, and then a quick header attempt is finally corralled by the Lady Titan netminder, and she's going to roll it out. Haven't seen a lot of uh, drop kicks, free kicks, 
by the goalie so so far today. Of course, she's kicking it into the wind, and we see what happens when you get a little bit of air under it right there. It's going to hit the high point and then just sort of hold if you're a golfer, sort of like hitting a wedge into the wind. It's just going to hang. You're going to lose a lot of yardage. It's just going to sort of stall out, reach its high point, hang, and then fall straight down. Joey takes it. The cross is too hard and out of bounds, so a corner check that throw in rather awarded to the Lady Titans on the near side. As we near eight and a half minutes into this one. They tried to clear that kick, but played near midfield by El Reno, and, she, and uh, they get it stolen off of their foot, so retreating. Maybe better off uh, trying to get this one to Kinley Golden. Foot race on the near side, and the defense finally in position. Poked out of bounds, corner kick to, sorry, throw in rather, awarded to Carl Albert. That's going to be last touched by the El Reno Lady Indian. So another sideline throw in a word to Carl Albert. Kicked out of bounds, last touched by Carl Albert. So throw in coming. Joey with it in quickly. Wind pushing that ball and pushing that ball. Leslie's in a foot race. Can she get there? She's not, but she's got an opportunity for a quick defensive steal here. And a goal kick awarded. The throw in basically went untouched with the wind at his bag, just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. Carly's able to stop that one, takes it off of the upper right leg, puts it in play. The one-timer, Carly, or check that, uh, Joey, I'm sorry, takes it. Whistle blows, so a foul called, and we'll see who they award it. It's going to be awarded against El Reno, so a penalty, a free kick coming for Carl Albert from about the 29-yard line of the defensive end of the field. Stay tuned after this for the men's contest between these two. Perennial 5A contenders. That one's going to be poked clear and on to the right foot of the goaltender. She's going to punch it out to about the 30. And you see the wind there, stands it up, puts it, and she hit it with a little bit of backspin anyway. Quick throw in coming. A miscommunication by Carl Albert in a possible scoring opportunity, but finally corralled by the Lady Titans netminder. her foot on that one. It stalls out. Foot race coming. And that one's going to be taken off the foot. Reversed. Carl Albert able to hang on to it, but taken right back by the Lady Indians. Caroline Huber with it in the center circle. 
She kicks it hard off the right foot. Another foot race coming, but the wind, again, this is like trying to judge a short game shot in the golf course right now. Every time you think you have it figured out, the wind either dies down or gusts up on you, and it ends up not executing the way you thought it would. And a throw-in awarded deep down the near side sideline, but a throw-in awarded to El Reno. Joey Lyerly is going to take her position about two yards off of the corner kick pie wedge. Pie slice, if you will. Long throw in. Leslie plays that one off the chin. Conley puts the left foot on it, but hooks it near. No good. We're nearing 14 minutes into this one. Tied nil all. Ball bounces one time at the 35 and then again at the 40 and out of bounds. So El Reno awarded a throw in on the far side sideline. to Carl Albert, and they do, but it's right into the numbers of an El Reno jersey and out of bounds, so another throw in, this time about 12 yards closer. Carl Albert with a running start. Joey gets her pocket pick from behind. Leslie stays up and shows pressure. Great run by, by Carly to keep that one alive. She's going to head that one out of bounds. Ball awarded to Carl Albert. Spun out of bounds and last touched by Carl Alberts. Well, Reno trying to get some momentum. Long throw in by Joey Lyerly. Clears everybody. He's going to be headed out of bounds by Carl Albert on the near side. No, kept alive, I'm sorry, by El Reno. Not sure they wouldn't have been a little better off letting that go out of bounds and setting up the offense off the throw in, but defense able to get that one back, at least for now. Chip to Bree Vickers. She takes it off her, off her numbers. And cleared out of bounds. Throw in awarded to El Reno. Carl Albert looked like, almost looked like they were trying to clear that to the far sideline, and it just sort of stood straight up, went forward about five yards, and dropped straight down. Last touched off the foot of Carl Albert. Throw in awarded to El Reno on the far side sideline. Throws it in from the short side 48. Headed immediately out of bounds. Looks like a substitution for Carl Albert. But they're not going to let her sub yet. You have to have the, the ball in your possession out of bounds to sub. So we'll look for the Lady Titans to substitute at the next opportunity. Ball kicked out of bounds, but a corner kick awarded. So they're saying last touched by a defending Lady Titan. And a good turnout on this warm but blustery day. And Thursday night is senior night. So come on out Thursday. We want to recognize these seniors, talk about them, and give them the recognition that they've earned over the last, for most of them, 13 years of hard work. Corner kick by Carly Golden into the hands of the Carl Albert netminder. She tries to clear it quickly, but right back onto the offensive end of the field come the Lady Indians. Carly fights through a double team. 
the rolling right footer. And the Carl Albert goalie made a stab at it. Officials are trying to communicate to figure out who had last touch. And substitution to come. And so it looks like El Reno coach is advocating for a corner kick, but officials discuss it and award a goal kick instead. So goal kick upcoming from the far side corner of the inner box. That kick is high and short. Bounced at about the 22-yard line. It was kicked from about four yards deep in the end zone. So total flight there was about 26 yards. Kinley Golden's going to press up. She's going to make a play on it at about the 15. Hard kick with her right foot. Is Wynn going to help her out here? Reese is going to sub in. So Reese Hardy, the senior, checking in, checking out Christina Connor. She tried to play that ball from Kinley Golden here on the near side sideline, had that foot way up above her hip, about her rib cage, and landed right on her tailbone, a little bit awkward. So Coach Andrew Williams is going to sub her out. She'll get looked at quickly by the training staff, and if all is good, we'll be cleared to return. Throw-in awarded to El Reno. Reese Hardy standing with it. She's going to throw it in and basically off the face of Joey Lyerly. So now a throw-in awarded to the Lady Titans. We're nearing the halfway point through this. Nil-nil. El Reno done a, has done a good job of Keeping pressure on the Lady Titans. A little bit of body-to-body -body contact, but they're going to say the ball was out of bounds first and a corner kick awarded Del Reno. This is an opportunity, the way this wind's blowing, we see Carly Golden. She's going to come over and take the uh, corner kick on the near side corner. If she can stand this one up, the wind's going to help her bend it from her left to right, which is the direction that ball's got to bend to be uh, in contention of going in. So we see her lined up for that corner kick and has a favorable wind if she can get it to hang up. Tries the hard cross, the header, over the top of the netminder, bounces off the crossbar. A scrum on the inner box is finally cleared, a corner kick awarded. So good header attempt there, but just a little bit high. It came off of the top of the forehead. Sort of the crown of the head if you're a football fan. Sort of the crown of the helmet sort of area. Off the crossbar, straight back down. So it didn't get all the way across the goal line. But excellent execution there. El Reno's going to look to repeat the execution. Instead, this time they check it down to Caroline Huber. She's going to get her pocket picked initially, but win the foot race to the sideline. Throw in awarded. Quickly into Carly Golden. She tries to head it, but it's going to be over the top of her head. And a Goal kick awarded. The Caroline Huber throw in. Cleared Carly. Cleared everybody and rolled out of bounds. And again, sort of a muscle memory type throw. And when the wind's affecting that, it's not going to be as effective. The goal kick is going to be stood up at about the 22 yard line on the far side sideline. Kept alive by Bree Vickers and then cleared into the visitors' bleachers. Ball bouncing and now under the support cross members of the visitors' bleachers and trying to find somebody who can either hop the fence or crawl up under there and give them a hand in some capacity. And again, for the new fans or the casual fans, it is a running clock, although clock does stop for injuries, certain penalties, and made goals. But otherwise, a running clock. But because they do stop the clock on t from time to time, there is no stoppage time, so if you watch the U.S. Women's National Team or the Men's National Team or international play, UEFA League, CONCACAF, anything like that, they do stoppage time. We don't do stoppage time in high school because the officials do stop the clock, so there is no extra time added on. 
Carly, good ball handling there, breaks her defender down, and then she checks it down and is going to retreat back into her defensive position near the midfield stripe. Takes two bounces. The wind almost kept that in bounds for Carl Albert on the far side sideline, but it trickles out of bounds. A throw in awarded right at the 50. Caroline Huber is going to take the ball off the throw in. Crosses, and then the wind again stands that one straight up, and that went about three yards forward and about 25 yards up. So wind wreaking havoc as it tends to in outdoor sports. Sprint coming to the near side sideline and not going to get there, but not from lack of effort. Leslie Valdez on the sprint. Substitution coming for Carl Albert and a substitution waiting for El Reno at the next substitution time. Ruby Vasquez or Vasquez. Ready to check in for El Reno. We're approaching 16 minutes to play in the first half, so into the final third of the first 40 we near. Throw in awarded to Carl Albert, so last touched out of bounds off a of blue boot. I think that's going to be ground out of bounds. It is killed. It's killed <laughs> nearly over the visitors' bleachers. Takes a one hop and settles into the visitors' bleachers as we see El Reno substitute. So checking in Ruby Vasquez or Vasquez, however. The correct pronunciation is, if I got it wrong, I apologize if you're a Ruby fan. And checking out the senior, Leslie Valdez. She was a little late getting into the soccer rotation, into the soccer lineup this year by virtue of playing on the Lady Indians basketball squad that made it all the way to championship Saturday and dropped by only four to McAllister. Penalty called. So Carly Golden to free kick as the official walks off the 10-yard box. That's as, as much a player safety issue for the defense as it is any type of competitive situation. If you take a uh, rocket shot off of the strong foot of Carly Golden right off the chin, you're going to feel that one for a few days. Give him 10 yards, a little bit of room to get out of the way, I suppose, the theory there. We're at 14 and a half to play corner kick awarded so we see Carly having to cross from the far side 23 24 yard line outside the numbers all the way to the near side corner so a bit of a trek for the senior she sets it sets it down on the corner kick box puts her right foot on it a heading opportunity to score doesn't go El Reno takes a tumble on some contact from behind. But a play on awarded. And a race to the ball and a great run down by Caroline Huber to keep the El Reno defense out of trouble there. And a great job by Bree, Bree Vickers to keep that ball in play. Caroline with it. Advances it with her right foot. Trying to find Bree Vickers, but right into the defending legs of Carl Albert. 13 and a half to play before the break. Tied, tied all at nil. Ball out of bounds. Last touch by El Reno. Throw in to come for Carl Albert. Good job there by the Indian defense walling off, letting the senior goaltender, Carly Golden, put her mitted hands on it. She communicates, takes one step to her right, rolls to her right, puts her right foot on it. That's played hard off of the upper body of Caroline Huber. Poked free, a 50-50 ball. El Reno with the first foot on it. Carly tries to head it. I think this is going to be last touched off the white jersey, and it is. So throw in awarded to El Reno.
Good job by Carly Golding. Golden got as close as she could, let the ball cross into the goalie box, and then secured it. One, two steps to her right, rolls to her right, puts her right foot on it. With the wind at her back, that carries well into the offensive half of the field, but volleyed right back over by Carl Albert. Ball fought for right around the midfield stripe and then cleared deep by El Reno. And a penalty kick awarded to El Reno. So a slide tackle that was not clean, I think, going to be the call. So a penalty kick coming. And right now, they've mar they're going to, I think, mark her at about the 12-yard line. We'll see ultimately where they decide to put it. Looks like they may back her up to the 16. They are about the 16 and three quarters, just inside the 17. So we're a football. The nose of the football would be about the 17-yard uh, line. As we're inside 11 to play in the first half. Ball took off on her. Referee gives the ready for play. Two steps. High kick is batted down by the net miner. She can't hang on to it, though, so the battle rages on. And a goal kick awarded as the ball sails out of bounds off the left foot of El Reno. Carl Albert with it. Caroline Huber defending. She's able to poke it loose and then clear it. Leslie trying to read it in the wind, just carrying and carrying and carrying that ball. But the last touch to buy, number 18 for Carl Albert. Crystal Luna, a freshman there, last to touch it. And El Reno. Last to touch it on that possession, but they intercept the the uh, throw in. And you can see the win. That ball didn't have a lot of left to right spin on it. It was a fairly neutral ball. That ball bounced and kicked hard right. Almost as if you were slicing a, a wedge shot with your club face open. Looks clean, takes one bounce and cuts. Eight and a half to go. We'll look to see if the if Lady Indians are going to pick up tempo here, or if they're content to continue the current pace of play. Leslie Valdez checks out. And we see a rotation in personnel lineup. Of the 11 that are on the field, we see Caroline Huber press up. So a little bit of a different look here in terms of field position and personnel assignments. It's a little bit of a different look. See if El Reno can capitalize on the change. And you saw that kit go straight up stall. Actually went backwards from where they started and Carly tried to put the noggin on that one, but it sails out of bounds harmlessly to the right side of the goal. Don't have a stat sheet today, so I think a couple of shots on goal maybe. With really one really competitive scoring opportunity and a couple that if you're lucky you might get a break on, but one really good scoring opportunity. Had the open header on the corner kick, and that one 
off the upper body of Caroline Huber. And the hard right foot that time goes out of bounds, a stray right. As we're inside seven to play. And we see Christina Connor still standing over with head trainer Alex Bray having a discussion. Looks like she may be working on a working on an injury, rehabbing an injury, stretching and walking about. And you see the wind there, that wind's carrying everything under the under the bleachers again. Fifty fifty ball art collision there. The Lady Indian came out the winner of that particular contact. Nothing uh, nothing foul or malicious about it, just a fifty fifty ball. And soccer by no definition a non contact sport. Five and a half to play before the intermission break. We're tied nil apiece with the Lady Indian starting the game with the entire first half wind at their back. So a few minutes left to try and capitalize on that. But the wind at your back generally gives you a better opportunity to try and score. But it's certainly not the end-all, be-all to the exclusion of others. Quickly the inbound, or quickly the throw-in, rather. You can start to see El Reno now playing with a little bit more tempo than they played. Carly trying to fight through contact. That's going to be poked out of bounds by Carl Albert throw in a word at Del Reno. And Carly, great job fighting through a double team there. Gets it right back, passes it with her left foot. Kept in play by the El Reno defensive line. Last set of defenders. That one's going to be poked but skied. Played off the knee of Caroline Huber at the bottom leg of the script R in the El Reno logo at midfield here at Memorial Stadium as we're at four minutes to play. Fifty ball that time won by Carl Albert. So, just really their second or third trip deep in the scoring end of the field. And Kinley Golden handles that one with no problem. Puts her rolls to her right, puts her right foot on it, and that's going to run past everybody. And Carly's going to try and beat it to the line. I don't think she's going to get there. Three fifteen to play, and although you generally do want the wind at your back, the, the with the wind at the back, the balls are just bouncing for miles. El Reno with the substitute at the table, or at the uh, division line, rather. Paola Garcia, as I get the look from Cole Owen, this is basketball's long behind his friend. Get it together. Alyssa Guzman. Centered that one and was rolling to try and get it right back, but it got hung up on the foot of a Titan defender before the ball could get through. Inside two and a half to play here at Memorial Stadium. And a great poke through.
El Reno did get the substitute in. But that went off the foot of Joey Lyerly and out of bounds. Inside 90 seconds to play here in the first half of play. Joey plays that one off for numbers, tries to rip it clear. Last touched by Carl Albert and Lyerly quickly with the ball in bounds. Carly heads it, heads it forward. Alyssa on a sprint to the sideline. And a goal kick awarded. I had it as a corner from up here, but they're going to say Alyssa poked it through and crossed the line right before the Titan defender got there. That's worth 55 seconds. Handball is going to be the call it is. So handball whistled against Carl Albert. El Reno with a penalty kick. 30 seconds on the clock. Twenty seconds on the clock. As the officials trying to fix the spot. Twelve seconds on the clock. See if El Reno can get this kick off, and they do. But they're going to say it was quick kicked. And this clock's going to run to zero before El Reno's able to execute the free kick. Zero's on the clock. We head into the halftime intermission. El Reno all tied, nil apiece against the Lady Titans of Carl Albert. You're watching Lady Indian Soccer. We'll be back after the intermission. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. We know you have options when it comes to your vehicles, so we are grateful for the fact that you make us your dealership of choice. Whether you are needing service or parts on your existing vehicles, or possibly you are in the market for a new or newer vehicle, at Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, we will never take your time, loyalty, and friendship for granted. We are here for you, 405-262-2466, I-40 and Highway 81, exit 125. Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, the dealership with the gray canopy covers. At El Reno Family Dentistry, we are dedicated to providing you and your family with the highest quality of dental care in a comfortable, affordable, and friendly way. We offer a wide range of services from digital x-rays and implants to Botox. We are insurance friendly and offer flexible financing. Call today for your free first visit at 405-262-6737. We can't wait to see you here at El Reno's most caring dental office. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people. 
and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. Is it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. We know you have options when it comes to your vehicles, so we are grateful for the fact that you make us your dealership of choice. Whether you are needing service or parts on your existing vehicles, or possibly you are in the market for a new or newer vehicle, at Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, we will never take your time, loyalty, and friendship for granted. We are here for you, 405-262-2466, I-40 and Highway 81, exit 125. Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, the dealership with the gray canopy covers. At El Reno Family Dentistry, we are dedicated to providing you and your family with the highest quality of dental care in a comfortable, affordable, and friendly way. We offer a wide range of services from digital x-rays and implants to Botox. We are insurance friendly and offer flexible financing. Call today for your free first visit at 405-262-6737. We can't wait to see you here at El Reno's most caring dental office. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Stream with Oklahoma.
Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium, just a few seconds away from the end of the intermission period. El Reno now facing the stiff wind out of the now south-southeast. It originally started primarily out of the east, and it sort of shifted east-southeast now. But hasn't lifted at all. The equipment and papers up here in the press box fluttering about. If you hear the banging and clanging, those are the ceiling tiles getting lifted by the wind, so we apologize for that. We're not at nil-nil after 40. And El Reno in their second of the three-game homestand to end the home season. So senior night will be two nights from now. Tonight, today is Tuesday. Senior night will be Thursday. So come on out to Memorial Stadium and support these seniors. The official winds the clock and gives the let's begin signal. Now Reno looks to attack early. Joy with it. She attacks with her left foot. Check it out with her right foot. Alit finds a streaking Alyssa Guzman down the near side sideline. And that Caroline Huber kick didn't come off clean. She got They centered it to her, but she was unable to get the kick off clean. Can't tell if the wind caused it to travel or the spin caused it to misbehave, but the ball was just a little bit off of where she was thinking it was going to be. So she made contact, but didn't get it all the way clear. Kinley Golden goal kick. She kicked that one well into the wind. She didn't get it too high. Kept it low. And cleared it out to the 45-yard line. Alyssa Guzman does some fancy footwork to keep that one clear. And then last touch by the white jersey. Throw in awarded to El Reno. kicked over the top of the El Reno defense but right into the outstretched hands of Kinley Golden. She's going to pick that up and secure it. We'll see if she decides to kick this one out or roll it out or throw it out. Takes two steps to her right, rolls to her right, kicks to her right, bounces at the 38-yard line and played at the 45. A goal kick awarded on the out of bounds. Kinley puts it just above the bottom hook of the L in the El Reno and the West End zone. And 
Another good kick there. She kept it low, didn't get too much air under it. And Leslie Valdez takes it quickly up. She's looking to pass. And that one's going to trickle out of bounds and right into the hands of assistant coach Aaron Weevil. The ball inbounds, but off the foot of Leslie Valdez out of bounds, so the El Reno defense will reset. And Carl Albert tried to get a running start, cleared about seven yards of sideline, but a improper throw in. So the official right there says, nope, try it again, back up. See, if you, he says, look at my partner standing over there at the 39-yard line. That's where you throw it in from, not down here at the other 39. A great job by Joey Lyerly. Ball was at her feet near the out-of-bounds line, so she got out of the way and let Carl Albert kick it free. Caroline Huber bounces it one time, inbounds to Joey, and loose ball near the sideline. Substitution. Joey will check out. And Ruby Vasquez back into the action. And Kinley picks that one up about a half a step inside the semicircle. And you saw her. She put the foot on that one. That one stood straight up in the air on her, only traveled about 15 yards and then dropped straight out of the sky. And shot on goal, but high. Goal kick awarded. With the way the wind's blowing, that one went over the top of the crossbar. And But for the Blue Room and Coach Fred Slaughter, that thing would be halfway to the Calumet High School at this point. And you can sort of see the sweet spot there. Get it above about 12 or 14 feet off the ground, it likes to hang. If you can keep it low, just over just over head level, that ball will still travel for you. You get it much higher than that, though, and you're going to have problems handling it. Caroline to Ruby. Leslie jumps in the mix to keep possession. Caroline has to retreat, but able to keep possession. Great job by Alyssa Guzman. Just sort of sitting on the near side sideline. She's going to try and center it. Leslie was centered. Ruby sort of misplayed both touches there. Good looks, but I don't know that she got her feet organized the way she wanted it. Now Carly tries to answer the call. She forces a 50-50 ball, but a uncontested matchup, and that's going to go clear. So starting to see some pressure that we didn't see in the first half, but again... Every bounce is going to be in favor of the Lady Titans in terms of ball travel. It's going to be blowing from the, as you're looking at your screen, from your left to right, and sort of from the visitor's bleachers, which are on the far side that you can see away from us, to the near side. So winds are out of the, sort of sometimes straight out of the east and then rotating towards out of the southeast. And, and gusty, the stars and stripes on the, flag past the scoreboard is standing straight out. Yeah, that one got away from her. It's going to stand straight up. That was actually going to go backwards on her between the backspin and the wind. But Carly does a great job of letting it come to her and then keeping it low. Defensively, El Reno looking for a clear. We'll let that one roll out of bounds. Substitution coming. Checking in Christina Connor. 
Number 10 checking out, number 21, Ruby Vasquez. So good minutes for that young lady. As we near eight minutes into this one, so 48 of 80 minutes having been played. Kenley Golden able to, uh, to grab a hold of that one. Fast break opportunity upcoming for Carl Albert, but de well defended by Christina there. And we see Joey trying to put herself back in the place she does. With some good dribbling, clears her out of the way. Good job by Joey, understanding last touch there, so throw in a ward to Del Reno. She drops it. Ball's put back in play. Caroline Huber with some good ball control, able to step through and clear. That ball was looking for Leslie, and she overplayed it just a little bit. Wind sort of died down, so that would have curled right into her pocket. If the wind kept blowing, wind died down, and let it travel a little bit further before it started to bend. Throw an award to Del Reno on the near side sideline. Great job by Leslie Valdez picking that one up. And she sees Joey streaking down the near side sideline. It's misplayed by Carl Albert. And it looks like a pushing foul against Joey's going to be called here. So it looks like sort of mutual fouls. Each team fouled, but the officials got it right. Joey pushed first, and then the answer pushed by Carl Albert. So they're going to get Joey for hers. And then a throw-in awarded to El Reno. comes the throw in. Well defended by Conley Knapp. She stuck her head and body in there and mix it up. Caroline Huber says, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Tries to kick it to a spot. It's a foot race. Leslie almost gets there. Doesn't quite get there. Throw in awarded to Carl Albert. So the collision is ignored because the ball was out of bounds prior to the collision. Great job by Caroline Huber. She, she jumped, bent her knees, caught that one right off her shins, dropped it straight down, and into play we come. That one hurt. Now, it actually looks like he just untied her shoe. Lady Indian slow to get up. It's Conley Knapp. Doesn't appear to be any worse for the wear. Great pass by Caroline. Joy with it on the near side sideline. She tries to center it. Leslie slices and can't quite get a hold of it. Gets her left foot on it anyway, but misses it wide left. Good ball, of movement, good ball movement, rather, and a great center 
but unable to capitalize. But a testament to the Lady Indians offense as they continue to show pressure even against the wind. And Jimena Salazar will check in. Caroline will check out. Also checking in Alexis Lively. Checking out Bree Vickers. And I think a handball call, yep. I think El Reno actually was helped by that. Alexis jumped and ball hit her in the right shoulder, so a handball called. A little bit of a break there going for Carl Albert, so I think the handball actually plays in Del Reno's benefit a little bit, lets the defense get set up and kills the break that Carl Albert had. Fifty fifty ball. Kinley Golden times it, catches it off one hop, secures it with two hands, and lets the box clear. Two steps to her right, rolls to her right, puts her right foot on it. Good kick there, a little higher, but traveled well. Joey plays that one off the numbers. And Caroline Huber continues to attack. I think that's going to be a throw-in awarded to... Oh, they're going to give it to Carl Albert. I had it as El Reno up here, but the officials give it to Carl Albert. Different look, so... Lady Titans with the throw-in. A great defense there by El Reno to secure possession. They find Leslie. Little bit of pushing starting to break out here. We'll see at what point the officials decide to rein it in. Leslie took a little bit of contact to the shoulder, but no harm, no foul. She played through it, said you're going to have to hit me harder than that. Joey running wide right. Check that wide left. And off the foot. Substitution coming. Checking in for the Lady Indians. Conley Knapp checking out Christina Connor. Substitution coming for, two substitutions coming for Carl Albert. One more substitution for El Reno. Checking in, Taylor Decker checking out Alexis Lively. Carl Albert tries to flip the field. Great job defensively by El Reno to secure possession. The quick throw in, and El Reno's off and running. Carly Golden with a tall task, but she's able to clear it. Caroline Huber nearly broken down, but able to recover. Well timed by Caroline Huber, able to step in front of the Lady Titans. She was airborne, trying to put a hard right foot on it. Caroline Huber timed it and high pointed it. Caroline may have caught a knee. Looking a little bit winded. She's conditioned well. So you wonder if she didn't catch a knee or an elbow. Knock the wind out of her a little bit. Struggle to catch your breath and keep your heart rate down. Substitution coming. Checking in for the Lady Indians. Bree Vickers. Checking out senior Reese Hardy. Reese makes her way to the sideline. One more substitution. This time, Lily Butler, I believe. No, check that. Yes, Lily Butler checks in. Caroline Huber checks out. And we're two minutes and 40 seconds away from being halfway through this second 40-minute frame. And a pretty...
pretty good shot on goal there. Played it well with the wind. Just a little bit wide, maybe a half a soccer ball wide of the upright goal post on the far side. Carl Albert Netminder able to hang on to that one. Two bounces, three, four, five. And now a foot race to the sideline. Carl Albert able to get there. Carl Albert tries to center it, but a great job by Kenley Golden to hang on to that one. She has to keep in mind she's got traffic behind her, and she does let traffic clear. Rolls to her right, kicks to her left. In a foot race, who's going to win it? Joey Lyerly on her horse, can she get there? And it's going to be killed by Carl Albert to the near side sideline throw in award to Del Reno. Starting to see El Reno's tempo starting to play into their hands. Few more competitive shots on goal. Had a couple of looks so far, even into this wind. Carl Albert clears the zone, but El Reno right back on it, and they, they kick it right back to the center of the offensive attack there. Carl Albert tries to clear it again. And if this doesn't go out of bounds, it's going to be a break for Carl Albert. They keep it in play. So uh, Carl Albert trying to take advantage of the break. They sort of put a shot on goal, but Sort of poked at it, and Kenley Golden picks it up and says you're going to have to do better than that to get past the Golden Hands Award from the Northwest Class and Tournament. The Lady Indians, the winners of that contest. They beat Woodward in the finals 1-0 on the foot of Carly Golden. Leslie tries to poke it through, doesn't get it done the first time, stays with it, gets it done the second time. Joey with it on the near side sideline. Joey with some footwork tries to put a, I don't know, I think she's trying to center that. I was about to say shot on goal, but it looked more like she was trying to bend that center. The 14, Bree Vickers standing there with a shot to try and head that in. El Reno to substitute. Caroline Huber will check in. And Caroline will check in for Lily Butler. That was her relief just a few minutes ago, so good minutes by Lily Butler there. And a throw in awarded on the deep on the near side sideline. Joey Lyerly in position to take the throw in. And time is called. And there's an injured Carl Albert Lady Titan way back in the D on the uh, far side 25 yard line. As the trainers tend to her, we'll take a break. You're watching Lady Indian Soccer on El Reno Indians TV. <laughs> Is it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. 
Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education spree. The lady in the lady Titan rather who was shaken up being held off the field. I believe that's number eighteen. Crystal Lee Luna. She's a freshman, so we wish all the best for her. And uh El Reno athletic trainer Alex Bray headed with her to the sideline. So although she is the Head trainer for El Reno. She is the trainer for all athletes when any athlete is injured in an event at which she attends. So we thank her for her service, and she uh, qualifies as a frontline health care worker. So in this time of sort of the third run of COVID-19, we appreciate all of our health care workers, frontline and otherwise. Joey Lyerly inbounds off Carly's head. Joey back to it, made diving stab at it, trying to keep it alive. I believe that was Jimena Salazar put her foot on that one, cleared it back to the left side. Joey put her head on it again to keep it in play. Last touched by Carl Albert. While we were away, you were watching the ads of some of our newest sponsors. I want to thank Bank First, Dorsey Jones. And uh, El Reno Dental for their support. Got a few more in the queue. As soon as we get that, those details finalized and we get their information, we'll put that on our commercial stream as well. So we thank all of those uh, businesses. We ask that you go by and support them and, and uh, thank them for their support of El Reno Athletics and all things El Reno. The bender to the right off the netminder's knees and finally able to secure it is the Lady Titan goaltender. If you're interested in being a Sponsor of our Squirtle broadcast. El Reno powers, or partners with Squirtle. Squirtle powers the stream. They do all the server management and all the off-site maintenance and stream integrity, all that kind of stuff. So big thanks to Adam Dieselhorst and his, and his crew for making that an option for Oklahoma high school sports. So if you're interested in being a sponsor... And to show your support of all things El Reno, go to ElRenoIndians.tv. On the upper right corner, there's a little blue button that says Advertise. Click right there. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. If you still have questions or you're confused, or maybe technology is just not your thing because it's not for everybody, reach out to Rodney Hayden, the Director of Athletics, R. Hayden, H-A-Y-D-O-N, at ElRenoPS.org, or Brooke Robertson, the Community Outreach Coordinator, B. Robertson, R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N, at ElRenoPS.org. They'll get you hooked up and squared away with everything you need. We've got specials and packages for all price points. So whether you are on a shoestring marketing budget or market heavily in other areas, we've got, a bud we've got budget options to fit you. So let us know today that you want to be part of our advertising crew. With summer coming up, we've got a little bit of soccer left, baseball playoffs, soccer playoffs. And then heading the summer is a great time to get those details finalized. So when we hit the ground running for fall sports and a shot on goal is going to roll in and picked up by the netminder as we get as we start spinning up for fall sports in into the summer so we've got volleyball softball and football new head coach russell cook at the helm coming from bartlesville to join us here in the fine city of el reno great opportunity to get your money in and show your support that way we have time to get all the details ironed out so first time we hit the air for the next school year we are up and running at full speed Big thanks to those who are already sponsors and ask you to go visit them, support them every, every way and each way you can. 
That ball cleared. Trickling down the sideline. It's going to go off Caroline Huber's foot, so a throw in awarded to Carl Albert as we near 15 and a half to play in the second 40 minute frame. And the boys game to follow this. Tentatively scheduled for 7 o'clock. We'll see exactly what time we get kicked off and going. But stay tuned to ElRenoIndians.tv as soon as this is done. Our jack of all trades and technologist extraordinaire Cole Owen will rebuild a stream and create a new stream key for you. So stay tuned to ElRenoIndians.tv. Stay there on the website. You'll see the next game pop up. Click the big play button right in the middle like you always do. We'll bring every moment of it for you from kick to buzzer. Throw in awarded. Carly takes it this time. A little bit atypical to see Joey moved off the ball like that, but Joey's walked off the ball, and now the El Reno defense trying to get it cleared out of the center. A penalty called. Looks like El Reno, the benefactor, or the beneficiary, rather, of that penalty. So a penalty kick uh, awarded to the Lady Indians. So not saying not going to score from here. I'm just saying statistically unlikely. The ball is wiggled into this artificial turf at about the 29, and the ball's off and running. But El Reno content to keep it low. Carly to the near side, and not sure. I think she was headed for Joey there and tried to walk it into her, but with the wind blowing north of 30 miles an hour out of the southeast, it pushed that ball right out of bounds into the feet of assistant coach Aaron Weevil on the Lady Indian sideline. And if you are a Lady Titan fan, we thank you for joining us. We know you have a lot of things that you can do on a Tuesday night on a warm, sunny day like this, and we appreciate you electing to spend your time with us. And for all of our El Reno fans, of course, we are so very grateful that you elect to spend your time with us. Goal kick by Kenley Golden. It's going to go right back into the scoring zone here, but I think an offsides call probably. Uh, yeah, I believe that's the call. No, a handball call. A handball penalized against Carl Albert, the indicator given by the official standing at the 19-yard line, so a penalty kick to come. And from my perspective, I got the greatest job in the world. I get to hang out and talk about sports all day long, so... For those of you who are watching this, you're the folks that make what I do possible. That kick also low, one hopped, and taken by now Reese Hardy. Reese tries to give it, tries the old give and go. 50-50 ball. Carly wins the foot race and trying to fight through two white jerseys, and it's kicked out of bounds. Reese Hardy will throw it in. Two steps, a crow hop, and a drag of the back toe, and we are out. We are back to play. Joey keeps that one alive off her head, but Carl Albert tries to clear it. And a great crash down by Carly, and it's going to be last touched off Carly's left foot out of bounds. The throw in awarded to Carl Albert as we approach 12 minutes to play in this second 40-minute frame. In this first of two on this warm, steamy afternoon. If you have a senior at El Reno High School, there's make sure you remind them. There's a meeting on the 28th during the fourth hour class period. So that's approximately 1050 to 1140. So that'll be on uh, April 28th. There will be a meeting with Chris Burdine, the senior class sponsor. Caps and gowns will be distributed and cords, medallions, all the regalia. Make sure you've paid the senior dues. The Mary Kay Ashbrook grant came through and made the $100 dues $20. Still a lot of money, but a lot easier to find for most folks than $100. So we thank the folks at the Mary Kay Ashbrook Foundation. And there, there will be correspondence headed home or headed out to you in the near future about exactly what to expect in the last four or five weeks of school as it pertains to seniors. And of course, graduation slated for Saturday morning, the 14th of May, right here at Memorial Stadium. Large graduating class this year, north of 240.
Carly will throw it in from the near side sideline at about the 31-yard line. And Joey poked that one through. Not sure she meant to do that. I think she's trying to check it down and let Reese make a play on it, but she poked it through two defenders. Ultimately, will go as a turnover. Dialed up long distance, but held on to by Kinley Golden. Does a good job of keeping it in front of her and then securing it with two hands. Two steps to her right, rolls to her right, puts her right foot on it. Kicks it right down the, right between the hash marks, right down the center. No whistle, so a play on. 50-50 ball. Reese fights her way through two. And she finally sees some green space. She kicks it ahead. Caroline Huber finds it. Check that. Conley Knapp, rather, finds it, the freshman. That ball checked up nicely with the backspin. 14, Bree Vickers in the mix. She tries to put a shot on goal, and it's just wide outside. Another good look by the Indian offense, bucking this headwind for the last 31 or so minutes. Three substitutions waiting for El Reno. So next time El Reno has the ball on a dead ball, Indians will substitute. Carl Albert wins the 50-50 ball on the far side sideline. And he tries to slash, finally kicked clear. Waiting to check in for the Lady Indians, 13, Taylor Decker, number 10, Christina Connor, and 21, Ruby Vasquez. So those will be the three ladies checking in and a whistle, so a penalty call, but I think outside the box. So it won't be from the penalty spot, and it'll be a really, really steep angle. So very, very similar to a corner kick, a little less... A little less angle and a little less distance, but very, very similar to a corner kick. Only about six or eight feet above the in line. And about 10 or 12 yards in from the penalty kick square, or the penalty kick pie wedge, rather. The official marks off the 10-yard barrier with two blue jerseys in front of the kicker. And a blue jersey standing in front of each goal post. And a great job clearing it by the Lady Indians. And they've got an opportunity to cover some ground in a hurry here. Leslie Valdez is going to run that one down. She does. She pokes it through. It's a foot race. It's a still a foot race. Carl Albert finally hangs on to it, but El Reno covered about 80 yards, 85 yards of turf there. to give the Indian, Lady Indian defense and Kinley Golden, the goaltender, a little bit of breathing room. Reese Hardy off her left foot right into the feet of Carl Albert. So a throw in awarded and substitutions coming. Checking out senior Reese Hardy. Leslie Valdez, number 25, and number 16, Jimena Salazar. Six and a half to play in the second 40 minute frame. Little bit of miscommunication, but Indians come out with it. And Joey tried to play it from her right to her left, got away from her a little bit, rolled out of bounds, throw in a word to Carl Albert. Lady Indians shaking up on that play. And 
And that is Christina Connor. Officials finally stop play, so we see Leslie Valdez checking in. Christina Connor makes her way slowly over, and trainer Alex Bray ready to meet her. Could possibly be a cramp. And she may have just taken either a knee-to-knee -knee or a foot-to-knee situation. So clock running at 5.05. And so the official will just roll it into play, sort of a official stoppage of play with the ball in the field. So a little bit reminiscent of the old rugby scrum. Put it on the put it on the ground and roll it into play. And head coach Andrea Williams quickly on the scene as a skirmish breaks out, and the officials going to show a card. We're going to see who he elects to assign the card to here. Great job by Coach Williams and the officials to immediately separate those two athletes. Coach Williams grabs her blue jersey, said, get over here by me. We're going to talk about this. And the, I think the officials are going to conference, and they are. Don't know how long it'll take, so we'll stay right here. Big thanks to the Carl Albert folks. They brought me a roster for the boys' game, so we'll have those names and numbers for at least the starting lineups for you. For those who haven't been to, to Memorial Stadium for a soccer game yet, I do, I'm do. i doing both the PA announcing and the play-by-play -play call. So if you hear a few, periods, few long periods of dead air, that's generally me talking to somebody else. So I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I know they're going to put the ball at the 25-yard line. That's exactly where the skirmish occurred. So a yellow card given to Carl Albert, number 16, I believe. Caden Murphy. And they're going to sub for her. So it was not a red card, so she's not sent off, and, and they do not have to play a man down. But a substitution and a penalty kick awarded to El Reno with 425 on the clock. So the ball is going to be spotted right at the 30-yard line. I think a good call, whether they assess a red card or a yellow card, I think a good call by the officials there. They had to do something. Can't pass on that contact with just a regular foul. When it when it reaches the point of physical contact, but do appreciate the fact that they didn't send a red card and force Carl Albert to play man down. Elected to go with the lesser of two available penalties. Yeah, they're going to get Joey Lyerly for a push in the back. Good call there, so pretty good officiating by this crew. On top of just about everything we've seen today, and we see Lily Butler standing at the Line ready to substitute in at the next opportunity. We're inside four to play. That one's going to go over the head of the Indian defense, but also out of bounds into the Indian bench, so a throw-in award to Del Reno. In credit to the athletes from both Carl Albert and El Reno, when the skirmish broke out, both had emotional responses, and then cooler heads prevailed, and Both teams able to move on. Carly takes that one. Conley with it. She's going to reverse field. She on uh, that. They tried the give and go. Couldn't execute it, but the right look. 50 50 ball sort of all over the pitch today, and we're going to see who they award it to. And it is awarded to El Reno. So we're inside three to play, so. We should start to see at least both teams play with a little bit of tempo, a little bit of an urge, maybe not a rush, but certainly with tempo. We're knotted at nil all here in this 5A district matchup between the Lady Titans of Carl Albert and the El Reno Lady Indians. 
here in the European style football. Quickly thrown in to try and lead the offense. Ball's poked free. Played off the numbers. Conley with it. Now Reno tries to center, they do. Carly tried to run that one down, couldn't get there in time. And of the four or five games I've watched, I don't think I've seen Carly sub out. So she's gotten the lion's share of minutes, at least so far. Penalty called against El Reno. With 93 seconds on the clock. So a penalty kick coming, but long way from Pater for the Lady Titans. They spotted it at the 40. Wind's blown it to about the 40 and a half. Great defense there by the Lady Indians to kill that. That ball can get running away from you with the wind. In this case, that's your face if you're El Reno. You can't let that ball get behind you. And Alyssa Guzman to substitute in. And she'll, she'll, she will substitute for 14 Bree Vickers. kick awarded, so last touched by the Lady Titans. Two substitutes checking in. Joey Lyerly, number 12, and Reese Hardy, number 7. Lily Butler checks out, as does and it is Ruby Vasquez, so good minutes for her again. Kinley Golden tries to keep it low. It does balloon on her a little bit at about the 21-yard line. Carl Albert tries to punch it over the top. Caroline heads it out to the edge. Whistles blow. We'll see what the call is here. Oh, zero's on the clock, so regulation is ended. This is my first broadcast of an extra time game so I assume there is a extra period for some for some length of time and then we will resort to p uh, penalty kicks we'll take a we'll step away for just a minute while we reset here you're watching Lady Indian Soccer Reno Indians TV Sport. helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today that's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive Bank first. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. We know you have options when it comes to your vehicles, so we are grateful for the fact that you make us your dealership of choice. Whether you are needing service or parts on your existing vehicles, or possibly you are in the market for a new or newer vehicle, at Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, we will never take your time, loyalty, and friendship for granted. We are here for you. 405-262-2466, I-40 and Highway 81, exit 125, Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, the dealership with the gray canopy covers. At El Reno Family Dentistry, we are dedicated to providing you and your family with the highest quality of dental care in a comfortable, affordable, and friendly way. We offer a wide range of services from digital x-rays and implants to Botox. We are insurance friendly and offer flexible financing. Call today for your free first visit at 405-262-6737. We can't wait to see you here at El Reno's most caring dental office. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Oh, 
Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, and we are here to help. system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-7. After the five-minute changeover intermission, there is 10 minutes of extra time. The teams switch ins. So they have now inverted, so the good news is that the wind is at their back. The bad news is goaltender Carly Golden staring right into the sun. El Reno faithful on their feet and the captains have met. And it looks like Carl Albert will be the first to put the ball in play. You can see the El Reno defense ready to attack on the kick, and they do. Great job by Alyssa Guzman to play that one off her numbers. Joey got a little bit stretched out there, a little bit overstride. But El Reno still with pressure. El Reno fully aware that their advantage is to keep the ball in the short field and continue to try and put pressure on the goaltender with the wind at their back. And Carl Albert trying to get to the other end. You see on the other end, Kinley Golden has her hand up blocking the sun, trying to create a shadow so she can track play. It's going to be a scoring opportunity and an, an overplayed. And here come the Lady Titans. But they too overplay. And Reese Hardy with it. What's the call? 
I'm not sure if they're going to say it was out of bounds and were to throw in or a penalty. Ninety seconds into the extra time. It looks like it is going to be a penalty of some kind. And a free kick awarded, a penalty kick rather, awarded to Carl Albert from the 46. They put that one in play and over the top of the first two levels of defense, Kenley Golden crashes and secures it. So a good run by Caroline Huber. She saw the only Lady Titan who had a scoring threat there. Put herself between the scoring threat and Kenley Golden so Kenley could secure that ball without undue distress or hassle. And that Kenley Golden kick bounces deep. Reese Hardy keeps it alive. Substitution coming, 14 Bree Vickers. We'll sub at the next available dead ball. I expect the boys game will start a few minutes late. And you see you see coach Andrew, head coach Andrew Williams on the sideline, puts up two hands, says, wait right there, this ball's gonna go out of bounds. Reese quickly in with the with the throw in. And Carly with an opportunity to try and put points on the board with, and right off the face of a Lady Titan defender. And a great job by Reese of stepping through and then centering. Throw in awarded to El Reno. And we see Bree Vickers is going to check in. And Reese Hardy will check out. Throwing in for the Lady Indians, Peyton Bricky. And a corner kick awarded to El Reno. So great scoring opportunity here with 6-13 and counting to play in the extra time. See Carly Golden setting up to take this corner. Three steps, puts her right foot on it. It's high, scoring opportunity, and just wide left. El Reno with several scoring opportunities out of the corner today, unable to capitalize on any of them, but good looks. And a goal kick awarded to Carl Albert. And they inbound it short and quickly. played. It's a good look, but Carl Albert again kicking into the wind. That ball checks up right at the midfield stripe. El Reno off and running offensively. That one to the foot of Conley Knapp. It's centered. El Reno lets that one roll out of bounds. They'll throw in. 450 to play in the 10 minute extra time. And check that. It'll actually be Peyton Bricky to throw in from the near side sideline. Spotted at about the 42. She takes three steps, throws it from the 45. And they're going to say last touched off the left side of the Joey Lyerly head. Joey heads that one, but backwards. And an overplay, and Kinley Golden with a tall task. And she's up to it. It's a foot pursuit. Kinley holds on to it. So Carl Albert with an opportunity for an easy score. Kinley Golden comes out of the crease, flattens the angle out, able to get a hand on it, deflects it to her left, and then stays pursuit until she gets two hands on it to secure possession, and we're back to it. 
We throw into El Reno. Great throw into Caroline. Caroline with it on the near side, and they're going to say Caroline last kicked it out of bounds. Long throw in. A little bit of miscommunication by the El Reno defensive unit there. And a throw in awarded to El Reno. Joy with it in quickly to Caroline. Three minutes to play in the extra time. 50-50 ball fought for and won. And that pass to Bree Vickers was looking to center it. And a goal kick awarded. picking up again. And they're trying hard to get it to Bree Vickers, but the ball taking all kinds of bounces in the wind as we are at 120 seconds. Reese Hardy at the division line to sub at the next sub opportunity. Throw in awarded to Carl Albert, but deep in the El Reno offensive end. Takes a running start, and throws it from about the seven or eight yard line. Ball's going to outkick the Indian defense. Kinley Golden with another task. And wide right. But Peyton Bricky at a dead sprint trying to get back and recover. And we see Bree Vickers check out. Reese Hardy, the senior, checks back in. We're at 65 seconds. Throw in award to Del Reno, 40 seconds, clock running. Thirty seconds. It's actually going to be a penalty kick. Good job by the El Reno defense to keep that one out of a, out of a fast break. Reese Hardy goes body to body. 50-50 ball. Reese comes out the victor. Caroline with it. Joey with it. Carly with it. Carly reverses field. And zero's on the clock. So the extra 10 minutes has expired. And I believe PK's to come. watching at home and you're waiting on the boys game the ladies have played their regularly slotted 80 minutes and then an additional 10 minutes so we're at 90 minutes of game time and the two minute warm up period for the changeover currently down to 90 seconds and we're headed from the end of the extra time to penalty kicks
My apologies, folks. I had it wrong. So the teams are going to switch ins again. We will pay an, play an additional 10 minutes of extra time if necessary. And then if necessary, we will go to penalty kick. So we'll get through this 10 minutes, see what happens. And if we need to have a discussion about the PK rules, then we will do that. If you're a casual observer at home and you've got a loved one who delivers pizza, we could sure use one. Carl Albert looks to strike first. Heads up play by assistant coach Aaron Wee will not to take that one off the ear. Can't make that play there. That wind's going to stand that ball up. Got to keep the toe down and push. 8.50. Throw in a word of Del Reno. So if you are waiting on the guys game, there's very few things in life I can guarantee you, but I can guarantee you we're going to start that one late. Because it was scheduled to start right about now. Caroline able to break contact. Foot pursuit. Throw in Del Reno. Killed out of bounds, throw into Carl Albert. And Carl Albert to sub. Long throw in. Headed quickly. He's going to pop over the top. Alyssa saw it and was trying to get her feet set to go make a play on it. Carl Albert puts a shot near the near the net, but wide right. Winds have shifted back again out of the east and picking up. Goal kick awarded. Kinley two steps, puts her right foot on it, and then you see the ball stall out there at about the 25, but a good job by Carly to push that one downfield with the head. That one's headed back. Kinley's going to have to get there. Does she get there? She's able to kick it clear. Corner kick awarded. So scoring opportunity upcoming for Carl Albert. And you'll see Kinley put her troops in position. She's got a defender on the near side post. Sister Carly on the on the on the far side post rather. Sister Carly on the near side post. Just sort of manned up from there. So we'll see if they're going to try and stay low or if they're going to go high and try and play it right over the top of them. They're going to go high with it. It does hang. El Reno needs to clear. Fought for, still kicked around. El Reno has a chance to clear, and they do. Taken right back. That shot's going to be high. And a rocket shot.
substitute for the Indians next chance they get. It looks like they are going to beckon that sub on. Checking in, Ruby Vasquez. Checking out, Conley Knapp. Kinley puts her foot into that one. Carly pokes it away once, nearly gets to it twice. Good defense from the center of the off defensive zone. That ball comes. Kinley picks it up, says thank you very much. And we're more than halfway through the second extra ten time. That one came off her foot bad. She doesn't like it. Kinley retreats, does a great job of playing that one right into her gut, catches it with two hands as she's ready to put the ball back in play. If you've never done that at home, that's tougher than it looks. You're trying to judge that flight. The wind's changing the flight. The ball's hanging, and you've got to time it so that it doesn't get behind you and that it doesn't short hop you and bounce over your head and that Carl Albert doesn't have a play on it. So several factors you've got to make, and that pass intended for A streaking Taylor Decker. Cleared initially. Carly crashes. Good defense by Peyton Bricky to separate man from ball, but right back comes Carl Albert. Long shot on goal. Kinley tracks it. Sees it with two hands, catches it with two hands. Inside three and a half to play. That's going to hold up on her, and it does. But misplayed by Carl Albert. So El Reno, the benefit of a header in the wrong direction. But over the top of the defense, going to be a 50-50 ball. Kinley's going to have to kill it. She does. Corner kick coming. So another scoring opportunity here for the Lady Titans, the Lady Indian defense, has to rise to the occasion. And you'll see Kinley Golden get her defensive matchup. They're actually going to say a throw in, so they say she killed it before it got to the end line. So a little bit of a break there for the Lady Indians. It's going to bounce out of bounds at about the 20-yard line, so Carl Albert will inbound, and they do quickly. Played off the back side of the head, out of bounds. So another throw incoming, a 2.20 to play. Great job by Joey Lyerly. First tried to play it with her head, stayed with it, able to get it clear. Lots of pressure. Carly squeezes, able to keep it in play. Alyssa Guzman pokes it free. Carly on the run. Carly coming up the near side. Finds Alyssa. Right back to Carly. Carly's got a free release. Can she get a shot on goal? Tries to find Alyssa. She underplays it. Good defense by Peyton Bricky. Carl Albert with it wide trying to center it. That's going to go wide. Goal kick, goal kick assigned. Or awarded rather. Substitute coming. Checking in. Conley Knapp, and we'll see who she's coming for. Not sure who she came for. Looks like she came for Taylor Decker. Carl or Kinley, sorry, puts her foot on that one, keeps it low. And a numbers disadvantage, but Kinley grabs that one. Inside 60 seconds to play. So we're into the 100th minute. Great job by Reese Hardy. Alyssa with it. And Alyssa's, Alyssa draws the foul with 40 seconds on the clock. Clock continues to run. Twenty-eight seconds on the clock. A 
19 seconds on the clock. So I think El Reno's going to try and put one shot on goal here and see if they can get away with it. 12 seconds, 10 seconds. Caroline with the hard right foot. It's not going to get there. Carl Albert tried to clear it. They cleared it right into Reese's nose. Zero's on the clock. We're headed to penalty kicks. So as I understand it, each team has to pick five from the 11 that were on the field when the time ran out. And all five of those players will shoot. If we're still tied after those five, they then pick two more of the 11 who were on, at the, end of, at the, who were on the field at the end of play. And those two will shoot. And if after those 12 players have shot, there's still no winner, it's then a one-to-one. -one. Blue, white, blue, white, blue, white. Each team has a chance to score until we have a winner. So we'll bring those five to you as soon as we know them. Captains, captains, rather, I'm sorry, have had their meeting. We see number 10, Conley Knapp. Not, not sorry, not Conley Knapp. Christina Connor, she's on the sideline. Has her left shoe off and her left sock down below her foot. So and we'll see the five that, we'll see which five El Reno elects to start with. And we see the senior captain, Caroline Huber, is putting on the goalie mitts. So it looks like the five for El Reno. 22 Bree Span, 14 Bree Vickers, 13 Taylor Decker, 15 Carly Golden. There's one more. I'll try to grab it when I see it. And 22. Now we already got her. That's Bree Span.
in number 11, I believe that's Darla Estrada. And we see Caroline Huber is going to head down and take her place in waiting as we head to PKs. And the five for Carl Albert, number 12, Olivia Whaley. We'll bring the rest of them to you as we see them. To lead things off for the Lady Indians, Number 11, Darla Estrada. So making her first appearance, at least for tonight. They'll place the ball on the penalty spot. The goalie's heels can't leave the goal line until the ball is contacted. First shot by Darla is up and good. El Reno takes a 1-0 lead after one. Well, halfway through one, rather. The answer opportunity forthcoming for Carl Albert as we see the senior jack-of-all-trades, Caroline Huber, standing in the goal with the Goalie gloves on. And it would appear number zero, Sydney Pride, to start things off for Carl Albert tonight. And off the crossbar, no good. El Reno leads 1-0 after the first of five. Now we see the senior, Carly Golden. With the strong right leg, she's going to put the ball in the penalty spot, wait for the ready for play, and try to bury it to go up 2-0. With the whistle, the right foot, and she rolls it in. Not quite lower right, 90. Goalie leaned right. Carly squirted it by on the left side. El Reno leads 2-0 halfway through the second penalty shot. Caroline Huber with her heels on the goal line. Kick is up and good. El Reno leads 2-1 after two. Caroline read it right, just couldn't quite get there. Caroline dove right. The ball went to Caroline's right. She had the right read on it, just couldn't quite cover the distance. Kicking third for the Indians. 22, Bree Span, a junior. She rolls that one, no good, wide left. Caroline Huber looks to answer the bell. El Reno leads. 2-1, halfway through the third. And that one went crossbar back corner. So lucky bounce there. But it goes in and it's worth the same whether it goes in on purpose or on accident. We're tied two all after three. Kicking in the four hole for the Indians, 13, Taylor Decker.
Sort of a game of timing, trying to time to get the kickoff. The yeah, official says you didn't wait on me. So that'll go down as a no kick. She'll put it back on the penalty spot and try it again. That look was lower right. We'll see what she decides to go here. If she's going to stay lower right or try to go something left or upper. And she slow rolls it to the left lower 90 and good. 3-2 now the Indians lead halfway through the fourth. Kicking now for Carl Albert. Number four, Lily Ross. They've gone lower left twice on Caroline. First one was high and right. Second, next two were lower left. We'll see what they do here. And a stop on the fourth by Caroline Huber. El Reno leads four, check that, three to two, headed into the fifth. Number 14, Bree Vickers, the fifth kicker and the round of initial five for the Indians. She puts it on the penalty spot. We'll see where she decides to go with it. And she buries it far right, and that's the ball game. Lady Indians win 4-2 in penalty kicks. You see the emotion on the senior's face. Come out, join us next Thursday right here for the senior night season ending home game, or the home season ending game, rather, for senior night next Thursday. We're going to go ahead and kill this stream. We're going to let the great Cole Owen build us a new one, so we're ready to go for the guys game. Lady Indians win in penalty kicks 4-2. to two. We'll see you in just a minute. You've been watching Lady Indians soccer. 